I don't like it. I mean, the squats are miserable. You know, when I'm at depth, my bottom rib hits my thigh. It's almost impossible for me to keep it over my midfoot when I'm at depth. I mean, just because the way I'm built, it almost, like mechanically, the damn thing just almost can't keep it in, in, in over my midfoot. You know, there's just nothing fun about it. You're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. Hey, welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I am Scott Hambrick, and that is Matt Reynolds, of course. And thank you so much for listening. You should go. You should go follow Barbell Logic on Instagram, and you should follow Matt and I. You should go go do that right now. Um, what are you going to tell them what it is? At Barbell Logic, that's probably pretty easy to find. Yeah, it's right? at Barbell Logic. I'm at Scott underscore score I wonder if you Search Scott Hambrick. Will it just show up? Or if you search Matt Reynolds, they probably would. Yeah, unless I'm you know being shadow banned, and then you are at Reynolds, Reynolds Strong, Strong on there. Yep. I, go do I don't that. post that much anymore. I occasionally I get on these little kicks and I'll post, but I've said this before. I've, I've been very pleased with the work that my team has done. Alexis Wolfer and Brooke Halbenstricker and that crew for Barbell Logic. They do such a good job of maintaining our social media accounts that I don't have to do it anymore. So right. for a long time, my social media accounts were bigger than the, the businesses. And so I felt sort of obligated to continue to post stuff. And uh, now I'm, I'm just not that interested. Yeah. So I've been doing, I've been doing, um, uh, Instagram lives most week week evenings. Yeah, it's it's fun. Uh, yeah, you might yeah. go follow those things. Hey, let's talk today about what your first month in LP is like as a weight your first month as someone who does weight training. Yeah. Well, let, let's be honest. It's it's scary, is what it is at first. Think so. At first, I think a lot of people get into it and they're and they're they're misguided about what they, you know, it's pretty rare that somebody comes from doing absolutely nothing. Right. And they have zero background whatsoever in anything. Uh, most of these people were running or they, you know, or like they're running around their neighborhood right? or they're, you know, or they're somebody going to water aerobics or whatever. Right. And they realize like, man, this just isn't working. And, uh, and they discover, the values of strength training, whether that comes from like the starting strength book or whether that comes from talking to a friend or family member that's been changed by this thing. And so it's sort of, it's sort of buying into, it's, it's sort of like a conversion into a religious experience. I mean, I really think it is. Uh, oh no. You don't think so? Not for me, man. Okay. Well, do tell. Well, well, Charity and I have been talking about this. Charity has this talk that she gives about, uh, you know that she has, that she has two different kinds of clients. She has a client that uh, is super passionate about this. You, know, you you might call them a competitive per, a, a competitor, maybe yeah. Matt, and then the others that are just take this as medicine. Yeah, you know, and and they're two different kinds of people, and the motivations are different, and so their their training approaches are different. Everything's different, and man, I'm definitely the um, uh, you're the medicine guy. I'm definitely the medicine guy, and I'm definitely the other side. Man, I had a I trained yesterday. It was so fun. I had such a fun training session yesterday. I one of those training sessions like where the so you don't ever have that, right? Or it's pretty rare. Yeah. I mean, you, you sometimes you get with people and you enjoy the sociability of the training and the coaching, but yeah, you don't actually enjoy putting a bar on your back and doing something. No, no. You, you should see the look of disgust on his face. No, I, I like don't. It, it literally looks like he just watched somebody vomit on the side of the road. No, no, I don't. I don't. And I don't want to. I don't want to. I, I think that the the things we say change the way we think, and the way we think changes the way we live. And I almost, you know, I don't even want to say <laughs> sure. all the work. But you know, uh, there's nothing about heavy squats that I I'm, I'm even capable of enjoying. I actually think this is really an interesting dichotomy between you and I. And the way we've approached these things, I mean, I can go back and very much remember what it felt like to start this thing for the first time. And that was not my experience at all. And so I think that we probably have our listeners out there are are going to identify with either you or I in this. Right. And, and and neither are right or wrong. They're just no, right. this is the way different personalities are. So all right, so so you you've told your story. You went to a personal trainer for a long for mm-hmm. a while and you were fat and out of shape and and decon, like deconditioned like literally your conditioning sucked mm-hmm. and he yeah. got you in he got you in better shape and you lost weight but you were weak right and you're like all right I want to get strong 
And he was like, I don't know how to do that. Yeah, well, he said he did, and then he wasn't able right. to, he, and, you right. know, and, and it didn't work. And, and then I found this, and I really did enjoy the the results, you know. I mean, I'm still that way. You know, I like when sure. it gets me. You know, I liked, I liked how effective it was. I liked how fast we got results. And, and in the first month, in the first month, I didn't have the same attitude about it that I do now. I mean, it's not that heavy. So did you enjoy it the first month, or was it, like, frustrating the form and stuff? No, I'm, no. You know, in the first month, man, it's not heavy enough that your form matters an, <laughs> that much, you know? Sure. Yeah. Well, did you even know that it was – Yeah, I mean, you were kind of trying to coach yourself, and then you were coming to see me, like, once every, whatever, two or three months. I don't think I, – I, I started this in November. I don't think I saw you until February. Right. And then I didn't start online coaching you till the following – till that October yeah. or something. So we – I, I maybe coached you twice or something in person, and then after the second time, I think you called me and I'm like, "Hey, you do online coaching?" I'm like, something yeah, like a little that. bit. All right, so you're so it's okay. So it's it's decent the first month for you. No, you weren't really nervous because the weight wasn't heavy. No, no, not too much, not too much. You know, I just did five pound jumps on the squat in particular. I remember that. You know, I'm like, I, I'm in no hurry. You know, were you training at a at a kind of a globo y gym or were uh, you training? No, it was a it was a local it was a local gym kind of on the globo model. Okay. But they had, you know, a couple squat racks and you know, not too bad. It was one of these places attached to like a physical therapist group, you know. Okay. It was an, okay. it was it was all right. And I trained with one of my buddies and we would ro- roll out at and we would start at I think o six hundred and do our stuff and um I like it when civilians use military time. It's good. Way. Do you use military time because your dad forced you to do that growing up? Was that like a... Uh, no, dad did not, but it's, I do it because it's clean, man. It works. All right, that's fair. But, you know, that first month, it wasn't that terribly heavy, and uh, and I was getting, you know, I was getting results. The thing works in that first month. Like I said, that first four weeks is not that bad um, for an older guy that's taken, you know, smaller jumps. You know, I didn't start with a heavy, heavy weight. I think my first squat session was probably 85 um, cause sure. I didn't, I didn't have a coach and I'm like, you know, I don't see any sense, in, you know, sure. running this up to 145, which would have been challenging at the time, you know? Sure. So I started low and, and I uh, was going well, you slow. Make, you make increases so fast that a guy like you can kind of do the math and go, well, if I'm going to do this three times a week, I'm going to add 15 pounds per week. It's not going to, I'm going to blink and it's going to be heavy. Yeah. You can start with body weight squats and you, yeah, right. it's heavy and fast long. enough. So that, that, that's the way I did it. But you know, here it is all these years later. And I get, you know, 10 pounds of squat PR a year or something like that, you know, and, you know, what's my tonnage to get that, you know, it's not as high, it's not as high as yours, but you know, it's a lot of work. You're out, I'm out there, you know, by the way, I don't know that that's true. I think that I'm one of the things that's maybe colored my lens as a, as a programming coach for a while is that to this day, like 20, 20 plus years of training, God, 23 years of training. Um, I still lift heavy. I I enjoy lifting heavy, and my volume is relatively. I talk about that workout I did yesterday. Right. Yesterday I worked up. I I pressed two sixty five yesterday, pretty easy, and then I pressed two twenty five for one set of five back off. Right, and then I benched, and I and I benched like Mister Hambrick has told me to. I benched uh, with no explosion, None. and uh, just very smooth up and down, because so as to not uh, rattle my pectorials from the uh, from the bone. And I benched 315 for eight and uh, slow and smooth and steady, you know, no mm-hmm. throw. And um, and then I went out and did uh, did kind of a circuit of – actually, I did a bunch of lat pulldowns and four sets of lat pulldowns. And I did a circuit of biceps and triceps. And uh, I got out. I felt I felt great. I mean, I you know, it was – I just loved it. I loved to train. My, my buddy was over here, Don, who, uh, who I trained some in person and trained some online and – I just had a blast doing it, but that's still. But you think about like how much tonnage is that for me? So I did a single on the press, and then one back off set of five. Then I did one set of eight yeah. on the bench press, and and uh, that was my pressing for the day. And so it's possible that your tonnage is higher than mine over the course of a year, uh, even though my probably, probably, but, probably. Yeah. you know. And I, I, you know, I don't, I don't like it. <laughs> I mean, the squats are miserable. You know, when I'm at depth, my bottom rib hits my thigh. Um, yeah. Uh, I almost can't. It's almost impossible for me to keep it over my midfoot when I'm at depth. I mean, just because the way I'm built, it almost like mechanically the damn thing just almost can't keep it. Yeah, can't keep it in in, in over my midfoot. So um, as I get tired, I end up rolling the bar farther and farther down my back. <laughs> right. 
right. so I can keep it over my midfoot. And it's just, it's just, you know, there's just nothing fun about so you it. Can let nothing. your Scott can let his thoracic round, which he's he's hunchbacked anyway. He can actually completely have a a flexed thoracic spine, and it, and the bar doesn't go forward because it's below the round because it's <laughs> it's on the bottom of my shoulder blade. <laughs> That's right. It's it's on the top of your erector muscles, basically. I uh, um, I I can enjoy deadlifting every now and then, you know, but it's just it's just heavy. It's a lot of work, and uh, you know where I come from. That's just not a lot of fun. Yeah, but I like what it gets me. Well, let me ask you this. So let's let's do you have you ever done manual labor? Uh, I mean, well, I mean, I know you've done manual labor. Like when you like when you were had the construction company and you were building shit and stuff, and like when you actually had to get into a hard day of work. Did you ever enjoy that? Or were you like, nah, this sucks too? Nah, there's some of that. There's some of that stuff I enjoyed. Okay. But, you know, man, people, you know, there are people out there that work hard all day, for sure. Sure. There are people that work hard all day. They might be, you know, stonemasons and, you know, who knows, hard work. But they're not doing five sets of five squats, you know, all day. <laughs> Sure. You know, in the 300s, they're not doing that. No, it's, it's right. What we do in the weight room for an hour is clearly the hardest thing you're going to do physically. It's, yeah, one, it's of the, terrible. one of the, you know, you can't, it's probably the hardest thing you can consistently do physically, right? You could yeah. go out and run a marathon, which maybe is harder physically, but you can't run a marathon two days later. Right. right? I mean, you know, so, um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I, the thing I struggle with is I'm often sitting here at the desk doing work and I'm like, man, I need to train, but I got this work I need to do. And I, and I have a hard time getting motivated to get up and go put my training clothes on and walk into the gym. But once I'm there, I tend to really like it. I just enjoy the training. I think for me, it's a, it's a good stress reliever. It's kind of a nice out. I feel better afterwards, unless I don't, which occasionally with my hips or something, but, um, upper body, I usually do. And, and, you know, deadlift, I, what's weird is, is that my squat and deadlift, if my, if my hips are really bother me, uh, that can be a really sort of depressing day when I come out. Mm -hmm. Like the other day I, I squatted and I worked, I worked up, I was going to work up pretty heavy. I worked up to like low four, seven, four, four ten or something. And my left hip was just catching. Like it just, it was, I don't yeah. know how to describe it any other way. It was just something was caught in the hip. And I ended up having to bag it. I mean, I like it like it was getting worse between the sets, you know, and it was getting flamed. I was frustrated. But uh, but on the other end of the spectrum, if I have a good squat and deadlift workout, I think it's one of the most satisfying things that I can that I can do. If I get finished and I, you know, I hit good numbers and the workout went well and my hips felt okay and I stayed over midfoot. And then, and then afterwards, then I go to deadlift and my back is not so smoked from the squats and I'm able to deadlift okay. Like that's a that's a really satisfying day and I enjoy it. So you know, it's weird. I've, I've always said I, I really enjoy competition too. Have you, you've done, uh, like you, you've done competitions like with shooting and other, like other things, right? Did you enjoy the competitive aspect of that or not really? No. I don't care what anybody else does. You know, it's like me and then a bunch of other people that day. Like I just right. don't care at all about that other people exist. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a difference. I, yeah. They're like, oh, this guy's a better, you know, clay shooter. I don't even care. Yeah, I, like in I fact, he's a problem either. for me that day because if there was nobody there, I could shoot my clays faster. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I, there was something to me. Training and and the competition are completely different mindsets. Like I, when I train, I really enjoy training. I enjoy it for the for the for the work itself, for the training itself. Competition, which I haven't done in a while, but I I actually enjoyed the. I think I enjoyed kind of being on the platform, the spotlight, and having the having some some pressure put on you. It's right. more pressure, right? You get up there in front of everybody, especially when I was in my strongman days, and there were like you know a couple thousand people there watching. Um, you know, they get your heart rate going, and so uh, so it, it it was good. But yeah, I've always been motivated to do it. And I enjoy it. So so I'm one of these people where I I I love getting coached in individual sessions. Right. So actually, let me let me put it this way: I love people to coach me. I love being coached, but I do not want you to program for me. Right. I've never wanted people to program for me. I program just fine. Right. And I don't, I don't screw up my own programming. Like a lot of people will do. Like there's a lot of really good coaches out there. They're great programmers who can't program for themselves themselves because they get in their own head. That's not me, but I, I like having somebody coach me in form. Um, but I don't, I'm one of those people like charity talked about that. I'm just wired to be competitive at everything. I kind of want to be, uh, I just want to get in there and, and hammer it. Whereas 
you're like a spoonful of sugar. So, so, so then charity would cue a person like you or people who take their training like medicine. She would, her cues are more positive, more encouraging. Is that the idea or no? You know what? I don't know. We hadn't talked about that part. We've just really been talking about the programming. Oh, so the, you've talked about how the programming changes, but yeah. not necessarily how the coaching in real time changes necessarily. Yeah. And of course it makes so sense. So how does the, the programming change? Well, I think it makes sense that the programming would be different because sure. the goals are actually different at that point. Sure. They don't have to be different. Like you're going to be, they don't have to be significantly different. Like if you're, if you're on a, a four day split, you're going to be in the gym four days a week, you know? Right. And, and if you've been doing this for four or five years, and even if you're doing it for medicine, you know, yep. as a preventative, you know, you want the results. So you're going in there and holding your nose and doing it. Well, you're going to be there four days a week. So you, you, know, you might as well get, get what the best, the most from it is you, that you can. Sure. Um, but I don't, I don't want to be in a constant state of fatigue. Yeah. Like maybe she's willing to be. Yeah. You're, by the way, this, this story came from the fact because charity is wired to be competitive. Like she wants to go out there and beat everybody. And she also wants to set PRs for herself, but she's, she's very motivated to train and seems to, right. I mean, that's, yeah. and so you guys were talking about this because you, you two lie on opposite ends of the spectrum. Yeah. Yeah. So we were yeah. talking about, we were yeah. talking about it, just she and I and, 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 and about, you know, client, her clients in particular. So I don't have a timeline, you know, I don't have like, you know, she's going to nationals yeah. in November. She's got a, she's got a goal. She's working towards there. That's uh weighing on her heavily. And uh, if an individual session just, you know, ain't working out for me, I don't care. Right. You know, she's chasing numbers every she, single workout. She's chasing numbers every single workout. So she and, has a bad workout. She's behind. Yeah. And I've been, man, I've been way over scheduled too lately. Like I'm having a hard time getting, getting four in. Yep. And, uh, you know, if I don't. New, newly I retired. Care. Hammer. <laughs> right. <laughs> over scheduled. Way over scheduled. Yeah. Uh, but if I don't get four in that week, I just don't care. You know, and yeah. somebody that you're, if you're programming for somebody like that's frustrating as hell, you know, they're constantly screwing stuff up. You're moving things around on the calendar. You don't know what's going on. You know, it's, it's a big problem, but, uh, yeah, I just, God damn, I just don't like it. I could, I could, I don't know how many other ways to say that, but. Well, for, you know, for me, when I program people who are naturally competitive and want to chase after things and you, I just think you can push a little harder on them. Sure. On the programming itself. Whereas, um, for people who aren't that way, then you're, you're really managing fatigue and recovery more than you're pushing real hard on the stress. Yeah. Brett McKay hit a, a 320 bench press yesterday. I had him program for 310 to 315. So he knows, like, which I, I rarely give a range like that, but he's getting ready to go on vacation uh, for, for three weeks. And um, and so we're, I need to kind of push to try to get him. So, okay, I was going to let him have one more workout and then go for a PR. And uh, he knew, he's trained under me long enough, he knew, like, he could push. Like, if it's there, it's there. And so he took right. it. He took 320 and got it yesterday. It's perfectly good. And, so he got his PR. He hit a 225 press last mm -hmm. week at your house, yeah, and uh, and a 320 bench press. And so he's one of those guys that's just naturally just super motivated. Um, he's also one of those guys. He doesn't yeah. like doing it though. I mean, I get a text at least once a week. He's like, I don't want to do this. Yeah, but I actually think he's more like me though. I think he doesn't. I think he gets to work in and he doesn't want to go in there and do it. But then once he actually starts training, he's also written a bunch about how much he really enjoys training. Yeah. And that's why he's stuck with it for so long. So I'd, I'd be interested to know which one he he says he is. Um, and I, he has days like me too, where, where he goes in and it's just a super fun day, and he's having a blast, and he's listening to music in there. And then there's other days you can tell he just you know blue collar day, man. You're just hitting that punch card and getting in, getting out. And I have those days too. Like if everything hurts and feels like shit, and uh, you didn't sleep well, or you're stressed or whatever. Like sometimes that's that's what you yeah. Gotta I do. just so, don't. I, I can't even under, I can't even fathom how I could possibly be excited about and and enjoy a day where my squats are like three triples, like heavy triples, and then yeah. I had to go deadlift and then squat again. Like I just – Oh, yeah. There's no universe where yeah. a handbrake enjoys that. Yeah. I, I probably wouldn't enjoy that either. That's too, that's too much volume. I don't want to do it. But that's uh, that's where I'm at. You know, if I'm going to get a PR, sure. you know, i got to be doing that kind of crap. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, man, I agree. Uh, you know, when I have people that I have quite a few clients that compete, 
And I think of the clients that compete, I think they're kind of split down the middle between people who like do it because they know they need to compete and it kind of turns their training up versus ones who are internally really motivated and competitive. And uh, I handle them different at competitions. You right. know, at people who are like super competitive, if they go, if they get in there and they go five for nine or six for nine and set PRs, uh, they're fine. And there are other people who are that kind of like, man, I'm, you know, I don't really like doing this. I'm just going to get in there. Well, my wife is like that. My wife was really, you know, she was really strong and she hates competition. She hates it. Yeah. And um, I had to plan for her to go nine for nine because she needed that mentally. Because if she missed a, an attempt, what it did to her on a mental aspect was, was difficult. So it's, the, yeah, that really changes things as well. So, yeah. So, you know, you're probably listening to this and you're probably identifying with, with one of us to go like, no, I really enjoy like, getting out. And it doesn't mean like, if you really enjoy training, like we do, it doesn't mean you enjoy every single session. And there's definitely, I think there's always sessions that you're like, man, I just don't want to do this. Just like, I, Hey, I really enjoy my job. I actually really enjoy getting up in the morning and breaking down videos for online clients. I really do like yeah. th three and a half years later, I enjoy it. But there are definitely more, like this morning, we, we started recording at 6, 6 a.m., 0600, as you say. Yeah. So I got up at 4.45 and started breaking down videos. I did not want to break down videos at 4.45 this morning. So that doesn't mean that I don't enjoy my job in the same way that I enjoy training. There are definitely days where I'm like, I do not want to train. Or I even go in the gym and I get training and I'm like, this sucks. I don't want to do this at all. But, but most of the time, I actually really enjoy the process. So maybe you're listening to this and you're like that, or maybe you're like, like Scott is or like my wife and you're like, man, I just know I need to do it. It's just good for me. And, and I need to do this. And I need to, I need to also say, this is one of the things that I prefer least among the things that I will do. Right. You know what I mean? There's a constellation of stuff that I won't even touch. That yeah, sure. I'm, I'm not going to run. Probably you're can't. not going to go to I a mean, baby shower. Not right. I mean, there's so many things. Right. There's an infinite number of things that I won't do. So this is, um, and I would dislike all of those more than the things that I do do. Yeah, right. You know? That's a good, yeah. <laughs> you know, so this, you know, it's not like uh, I feel like I'm drinking poison every day or something like that. But yeah, it's, uh, and I clearly, and I clearly believe in it and benefit, know I benefit from it. And, you know, I, I like training with my wife. I like being out there with my wife. I like being out there with my brother in law and my, and yeah. my father in law, you know, we, when we train. And of course, clearly, I like thinking about it. You know, yeah. like, you know, about the the different aspects of what we do, whether it's the movement or the programming. And so there's a lot about it that I really enjoy. But when it's time for me to go squat, you know, some 95% triple or, or whatever, you know, coming up on a, on a end of a, you know, training cycle. You're not, you're not happy about it. Not happy about it. Fuck, I love a 95% triple. <laughs> now at the beginning of block, if I have to do five sets of five or six sets of five, there is nothing that I could do to make me enjoy that. Like, well, no. But how? No. But here's the thing: when you're an advanced athlete, oh, you have to. And and, and how much of it. your time is spent in that? A lot. Yeah, probably fifty percent. Yeah, you know. And then yeah. and it, and then it's a everything that isn't you know this sort of you know high volume accumulation whatever you yeah. know uh, is a gradient between maybe as many as. 35 reps in a training session to down to a single. So even right. though, you know, you're talking about maybe five by fives early, you're still looking at four by fours, four sure. by fives in the, in the weeks after that, yeah. I mean, you're, you're going to spend 80% of your time, you know, doing multiple fives. Yep. Which isn't very fun. No. And, and why we've argued from the beginning that like I would rather I don't know that anybody enjoys that. I don't think Charity enjoys that. Does she doing five sets of five? No, she she says all the time that she's like, man, I'll do triples and fours yeah, like sucks. until the earth cools. And, and so that's why I think we argue a lot of times um, for holding off on that as long as you can. Like the day comes when you have to get there. Yeah. But until you have to get there, like eh. you know, and and how many people actually get to the point that I'm at though where they have to do as much work as I'm doing and they actually get sure. to the thing where they, they actually bust their butt and they're in sure. the, you know, five, 10 pound a, a year PR range, you know, not, not that many, not that but, many, but one of the impacts I think of having so many clients now at BLOC is that we started to see this issue, you know, 18 months ago with really helping our coaches learn how to do programming for intermediates and advanced because 
everybody that came to online coaching was a novice. And if we did a good job as coaches and the churn stayed low and people stayed, at some point they're no longer a novice. And so do we know how to actually deal with that? Well, I mean, I, I think it's the same thing here. I think as more and more people go through this thing and actually stick with it and we provide coaches to them, then more and more of those people actually get to the point where you're at, where they actually do have to do some volume or they really do have to do sets of three at 95% or 93 or whatever. Um, and so, you know. So it's certainly more than it was two years ago when we started the podcast. Sure. So, you know, I think it's I think it's valuable. And I think it works for any I mean, you know, I think this mindset piece works for anybody, whether that's somebody who's coming in on their first month or certainly once they're in that second month of, of LP and it starts to get hard, you know, week seven, week eight, week nine, um, you know, you're gonna start to recognize are you somebody that enjoys it or not? Wait, wait I've told this a couple stories like this before where I've I've had people at in online coaching who came in and and trained for you know three to six months and made phenomenal progress and then quit yep and i was like what whoa you know i took it personal i mean people who are my clients and i said what you know what's what is everything okay that oh no, no no the service is great coaching's great i've made incredible progress i just hate it yep that's what they say i'm like you hate what like i hate lifting i hate going to the gym i hate putting a bar on my back i'm I, i'm not going to do that like, okay Man, it's, that's that person can't. You know, I can't save that person. That's not. So I had uh, Sean Richardson. You know, he's been on the show. Sean's Sean's where I'm at. You know, he has to do a lot of work to get a PR in a given year, and and uh, he and I had a phone call, and he said, you know, I don't want to do that. It's too much work. <laughs> All right. So we program him some maintenance. He says, now come September first, we'll run back up. Right. We'll run back up. He's like, I can't just, I can't just keep, keep working and keep working and keep working. I'm just, I don't want to do it. You know, he's yeah, like, the sure. weather, it's summer. The weather's good. I could be doing these other things. Um, like drinking beer at the pub, which is his which, favorite. Yeah, which is his favorite. But I get it. Sure. Uh, and, and I think that for somebody that's advanced like he is, and maybe like I am. Does he still train outside too? Yep. Yeah, well, that I mean, that makes a difference too, right? In the summertime, you're out there and it's hot. N- not to him. The, he doesn't care. He's, he's like a, those he's guys. like a he cow just, dog. He doesn't care if he's inside or outside. I think yeah, that's funny. But but I think there's something to be said also for actually for somebody that's as advanced as he is or you are or whatever to actually just cool it for three months. Sure. I mean, I, I think that it could actually have some um, some good uh, effects well, when for you the long term. You don't training. mean not train. Right. No, he's doing, he's doing, he's not doing one lift a day, but he's not doing a lot. Yeah. Uh, he, he's, he's never been happy with his press and, uh, you know, he's, I think he's pressing three times a week, but the other things he's not doing, you know, much. Yeah. And, you know, come September 1st, we'll put the pedal down again, but he's certainly not squatting crazy, you know, three, yeah, I, three, I, three I times a week. Question. I ask this question a lot of, of my of my clients I've had for a long time. If I've had a client for a year plus, you can start to see the the grind of the training and the number chasing start to take a toll on them. Mm. Not not just physically, although often physically too, but emotionally and mentally. And a lot of times I just ask them like, "Hey, what do you want to do? Like, what? How do how do we make training fun?" Right. Now I've had that I've had that question for you before, and the answer is you can't. No, you can't. I, yeah, I just, there is no like. So if you're again, if you're one of those medicine people, then you're like maybe there isn't anything. Hey, how can we make loading these engine blocks in the back of that truck? Well, fun, I get it, you know? but but you know, I mean, like my my wife, I, my wife is definitely a medicine type person. She does not enjoy to train, uh, but she enjoyed doing sort of CrossFit type stuff. Uh, and she enjoyed doing it with me and she enjoyed getting her heart rate up and she enjoyed losing some weight and like those sorts of things she actually really enjoyed. And I think, um, I don't think she enjoys lifting heavy at all. Like, I think she's the opposite of me where she, she would rather not lift heavy and she would rather just do like conditioning and stuff. Now, remember I'm talking about for the, you know, we haven't talked about my wife in a while, but my wife has squatted 350 and she, and she deadlifts 403 and bench presses 230 or has in the past. And so she's, She's real strong or has been real strong, but she just doesn't enjoy that s- style of training. And so for her, as she starts to come back, uh, you know, sociability is important for her. She wants to train with uh, somebody else, especially an, another female often. 
and she wants to do some conditioning at the end and she wants to feel like she got hot and sweaty and exercise like she likes that and that's okay because for her that's a step into towards getting stronger again and for me it's like i just want to get in there and lift heavy i just don't want to do any volume and if i do do volume i'd rather do it with accessory movements and not i i have no desire to squat 20 plus reps of squat ever in a workout ever i'll, ne I'll never do it and i mean there i have lots of clients who are doing 30 35 reps in a squat workout right but 20 i'm never doing 20 in a squat workout ever again for the rest of my life i'll never do 20 reps yeah. in a squat workout ever because i hate it because my hips won't work because i won't enjoy it. and for me at this point as old as i am i need to enjoy training it doesn't mean that everything i do in training has to be fun it's not like there's still my deadlift i still have these i've taught to you before these kind of maybe potentially delusions of grandeur that i can i can still set deadlift prs i think i've got a deadlift pr coming down the road for me um and that's going to require some training that i don't want to do yep um I'm, I'm gonna have to do stuff like you know deadlift you don't have to do quite the same volume you do with other stuff but you know stuff like four sets of four or like a top set of four and three back off sets of four. Like I like some of that stuff for dead. Yeah, sucks. Let me pull a single and walk out. <laughs> Go right. drink beer. Yeah, it's more fun. I think so. I think my press is similar to your your squat. You know your your hips hurt. You know. Yeah. Like if you actually had to do twenty five reps of squat, I wouldn't be able to squat for two more weeks. Yeah, you have to use a walker. <laughs> yeah. You know, in in doing the doing the heavy press work, you know, I pressed. What did I press? Two. 220 yep six weeks ago it just wrecked me man it wrecked yeah. me for for a month yeah well let, let me let me ask you this question so we've done that podcast about motivation over discipline that we mm. talked about that was really brett mckay wrote that article and so you, you see a lot of this um a lot of these guys preaching discipline over, over motivation and we're not anti-discipline guys we're definitely all about discipline but how how do you equate that motivation over discipline piece for you personally when it comes to actually training? Well, my posture, if I don't train, my posture is so bad. I can't eat. I mean, you know, just there are so many benefits that I get from doing the training. Right. That that the motivation is the benefit for you. Yeah, and that's the thing. That's what Charity's talking about. You know, it's medicine. You know, yeah. I'm motivated to take my medicine. Sure. You know, Professor Paul's motivated to go through his radiation. Yeah, Zero right. Fun. Nobody wants to do radiation or chemotherapy, but you have to because it gets rid of the cancer. Yep. That's and right. and you know, and this isn't chemotherapy for me. You know, it's not you know that bad. I mean, I, like I said, there's a whole bunch of stuff I won't do at all. And so this is one of my one of the things that I get least excited about <laughs> among the things that I do choose to do. Yeah. I mean, so I'm sure. clearly still motivated to do it, but. Uh, I'm not motivated because it's heavy. I think you're motivated because it is heavy. It, I am, and, for and sure. I'm not. I enjoy it. No, I, I agree. Yeah, you think about how many people do recreational activities for fun that you and I would never. Like, I'm never going to go play golf. I'll never play golf again. Yeah, I've got some friends that play golf. I'm like, man, we should go play golf. I'm like, that just doesn't. No, I can't. Not interested. I played golf years ago. I'm not interested in ever playing golf again. I don't want. I don't want to fish. I used to. I used to fish because my dad. My, I would yeah. fish with my dad. But I, the motivation to fish was that I got to hang out with my dad, right. not because I enjoyed fishing. I've never enjoyed fishing. Uh, you know, I, I, my family would go up to Canada to Lake of the Woods and go fishing for smallmouth bass and crappie and lake trout and stuff like that. And have fun. And I, I enjoy that. You know, the, it was honestly, it's, it's like a 21 hour road trip up there. We'd rent a big van. Right. And that was the fun part. The fun part was sitting in the boat with my grandpa and my great uncle and hearing stories about them being on the police force in the 50s. Like that's, right. that's, that's why I went, not to fish, although the fishing was pretty good in Canada too because you can catch stuff all the time. But, and so for, for me, I'm not going to do any of those things. I'm not, I'm not into sports. I'm not going to play fantasy football. I've done all those things, but I just don't have any – I don't get any joy out of any of those things, and I don't think there's any um, – for me, there's no medicine to it, right? Like it's not fantasy football doesn't make my life better in any way. Golf doesn't, and I'm not saying it doesn't for anybody. Like there's some people I'm sure that go play golf that need that as a stress relief that they've chosen to do that thing that they really enjoy. I've told this story before. My my brother was when his business, who, which is w much 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 bigger than my business, um, when his business was really blowing up and and um, there was a lot of stress, he really got into distance running, and it was he had he didn't compete at it. He didn't care. It was for him as a, like he would have his wife drive him like 15 miles outside of town and just drop him off. We, the, the, a lot of the old railroad tracks have been paved over and he'll just, he, and he would just run home. But how he would much put of in that, an audio book and how much of that is the actual running 
and then how much of it is I don't have my phone, no one can get to me. Yeah, and, I think there's you know, a lot of that. Actually, I think he usually would have his phone because he would listen to audiobooks while he would run, but he would turn on Do Not Disturb and keep it in his you know pocket right. or whatever. But yeah, it, it was that. I'm sure it was just that. So it my approach been, would be to just turn my phone off and not yeah. run. Sure. You yeah, know. me too. But I, he got something out of it. So, And I, and I'm, I try to be careful with my clients that say I, – I saw you say this the other day on Slack. I can't remember what the question was about – Um who it was that wanted to do something and you're like hey if you want to do it do it man we'll work around it i mean no it's going to take away from your training but you know if you want to run like you really get something out of run you really get something out of playing men's basketball league on tuesdays and thursday nights like okay you know we're not here to be a dream crusher if that's something that you really enjoy i don't want to tell you to stop doing the thing you really enjoy uh, but you have to understand that there's only so much stress your body can handle and so that it's gonna it will adjust your programming so but, man, I think it's important that people are doing stuff they enjoy, right? Like, you've got to do something like that. So, yeah, what do you enjoy? I don't require activities to enjoy myself. Sure. You know, I think there's – I think I'm able to enjoy a state of being. Okay. And I don't have to go do something necessarily. Uh, there are some people that have to do stuff. Yeah. You know, and I think that they probably lack something that would allow them to sit in a chair and enjoy themselves. Yeah. I think that I don't know that I can enjoy myself doing something at all in general. Like my yeah. most enjoyable thing is actually doing nothing because it's so rare that I, like I sitting in a chair reading a book, mm. eating good food, smoking a pipe, having a glass of whiskey. Those are things I really enjoy because it's a lack of activity. Right. You know, you know there, there are some activities I enjoy, but it's always, it's almost always well, one I really I, enjoy. Right. It's all, again, it's always, it's always, you know, for what it gets me, it's not the doing, it's rarely the doing, but on a positive note, you know, I love what it gets me. Yeah. Uh, I don't have to watch my food every single moment of my life for the rest of my days. I mean, that's just, that's just sheer misery. So sure. I go squat three times a week, maybe, or something like that, but I eat, I eat. You know, whatever it is, 21 to 28 times a, a, a week, you know. And, uh, you know, squatting is a small, small price to pay to be able to kind of, you know, let go of the reins on the food, you know. Yeah, that's true. Um, you know, my posture is so bad if I don't train. You know, it's a, it's a big, big problem. Sweep, yeah. Sleep quality is bad if I don't train. That's miserable. Yeah. Um, um, hip pain, my hips hurt a lot if I don't squat. Yeah, I get, I get bursitis in my hip, and it just hurts and hurts and hurts, and just a deep ache if I don't squat. And so, yeah. you know, I get I get lots of good from it, and um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll keep coming back. And I like what it gets me. You know, I like to be the kind of person that can do these kinds of things. I I definitely find it worth worthwhile. But in the moment, I'm like yuck. Yeah, it's good. So there you are. You're listening to the show. You're one of the two of us. <laughs> You're, you either like it or you don't, but yeah. we get our work done no matter what. And and I think the takeaway there is if you're if you're somebody that's that really doesn't enjoy training, then you you think about why you do it and you stay motivated because of what it what it gets you, what it achieves. Uh, and if you enjoy training, it's easy because you enjoy training, so you get out there and train, and you still get the benefit. You get the same benefits. So yeah, what do you want? What do you want to be? What do you want to pick? If you pick, what do you want to be? If I had to be one or the other, yeah. Well, of course, I'd rather be motivated. To, why would you? Why, why would you want to be not motivated to train? Um, it can probably lead to a little mania. Oh, sure. Okay, that's fair. You know, because we have X amount of attention. Of attention, you know, you're going to live 85 years if you're lucky, and you got X amount of attention. Sure. You know, you know, where do you want it? Well, I mean, I think for some people, we we've, we've mentioned this before that they are. There are a lot of addictive personalities that get very addicted to fitness and this lifting and strength piece. Yeah. And sometimes those people were real bad addicted to drugs or alcohol or eating disorders or uh, whatever it is. And um, and certainly fitness is a, probably a better place to to put that bullet. Uh, but it doesn't mean that it's healthy still, right? right? Like I think any any amount of addiction or mania was something I, I've definitely been there. You know, I mean, that's really the reason like from 97 to to 2005 or so. I mean, that was, it's my whole life. So, yeah. 
Uh, but I, you know, if I could go back and do it over again, I don't know that I would change. I mean, there's, you know, there are certainly things in my life that I would change, but in general, I think if you ask, I mean, I don't think we would be where we are. I don't think we'd have this company. I don't think we'd be able to train these people. And I, I sort of had to, for me, I had to put in those years of, sure. of sort of just like reading everything I get my hands on and just being like crazy into it. And yeah, that's your 10,000 hours there. It's, that's right. You, you know. can't, you know, how, how easy is it to get 10,000 hours without some level of mania right there? That's tough, man. Um, and so I still love it. You know, it's the one thing I've, I've done. I've, I've been, I've been passionate about things, uh, throughout my life and, uh, and the lifting, you know, I really got into in like 96, 97. And, um, so it's, you know, 22, 23 years now, and I'm just as passionate about it today or even more so than I was then. Um, you know, I just, i I don't know. I love it. So this is definitely why I've been put on the earth to, to do these things and to change people's lives with this thing. I don't, again, I don't think that this thing is, I don't think the strength is the most important thing in life. I think that there are other things that are more important, but I do sure. think it's, a, it's a general way to help people. And I think we're good at it. And so it's been a, a joy to do it. And I, I like helping other people do it and i and yep. it's been fun doing it for myself. So. Yeah. I like helping other people do it for sure. I like, I like that, that aspect of it very much. And you know, I, I probably like it. I, I I like training more than I'm letting on here at this point. But, well, there's another Barbell Logic podcast. Go leave us a review. We've got a long, long review. It's almost like one of Coop's Garage Gym reviews on well, iTunes the other day. Grief. Been it's like for an hour. He, he gave us five stars, but, man, well, it's, like nice. a, it's like a 1,200-word review. Oh, wow. It just, like, really Thank breaks you, the show down. He, Excellent. Uh, yeah, he does a great job there. He says um, – Mr. Hambrick's personality really comes through during the fitness inspiration episodes where he's clearly impressed with people who refuse to be constrained, blah, blah, blah. When answering what I perceive to be Mr. Hambrick's definition of a legitimate listener question, he's careful in his explanations and avoids ambiguity as much as possible. Uh, I, he says, I suspect that this is a learned trait from managing people. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so good. Yeah. I like it's, that you read those. Yeah. Also, send those questions to questions at barbell-logic.com, and we'll get those in an upcoming show. Talk to you guys soon. Yeah. Sucks.